Welcome dear students to our history class of standard 9th. Today we will be doing chapter 9 changing life part 1. So far we have studied the period from the year 1961 to 2000. The speed of change in the 20th and 21st centuries has been tremendous. Human lives have been changing rapidly. Things which we could not have even imagined earlier are now a part of a person's reality. Let us learn about the impact of these changes in the lives of a common man. In ancient and medieval periods, religion was an important part of a person's identity. Now, modernization has posed some challenges before all religions be it Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism, Zoroastrianism or Judaism. Upon India's independence on 15th August 1947, the new Congress-led government invited Ambedkar to serve as the nation's first law minister, which he accepted. On 29th August, he was appointed Chairman of the Constitution Drafting Committee and was appointed by the Assembly to write India's new Constitution. Dr. Bhimrao Ramji Ambedkar is famously known as the father of Indian Constitution because he was the man who drafted the Indian Constitution along with the drafting committee being headed single-handedly by him. The drafting committee of Indian Constitution had many faces but none like Dr. B. R. Ambedkar who is also known as Baba Sahib Ambedkar. He was a former Indian jurist along with the skills of economy. He was the only one to defend the drafted constitution when raised objection against and produced the present form of Indian constitution like a father. The Indian constitution drafted by Ambedkar is described as the first and foremost social document. The text prepared by Ambedkar provided fundamental rights to all the citizens. Now, Fundamental rights are those rights which are essential for intellectual, moral and spiritual development of citizens of India. As these rights are fundamental or essential for existence and all-round development of individuals, they are called fundamental rights. These include individual rights common to most, such as equality before the law, freedom of speech and expression, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, that is peaceful assembly, freedom to form associations, freedom to move, to live and settle down anywhere on the Indian territory and to practice any occupation religious and cultural freedom that is freedom to practice their own culture and right to constitutional remedies. These provisions in the constitution shook the foundations of the caste system. It helped to make the practice of vocations running in the family obsolete. Change became the trend in every field of life. Do you know dear students, when railway operations began in India, there were variety of coaches providing various classes of accommodation. However, there were four classes in general. First, second, third and fourth. First and second class passengers used to travel as a privileged class with highest level of comfort and privacy. In addition, there was a special purpose luxury saloons 
for very high level government servants and dignitaries. Third class consisted of plain carriages with wooden benches having insufficient space or facilities for sleeping and without lights, fans, toilets or even bars on the window at first. Fourth class accommodation was introduced on several railways in 1874 which were basically just em empty box cars with windows and without even benches cramped with people to the brim in unimaginable conditions worse than the third class. In the 1978 railway budget Madhu Dandavate put an end to this third class. Railway Minister Madhu Dandavate had outlined steps to ensure comfortable travel for second class passengers. It was decided to provide second class sleeper coaches with cushioned berths. Later, two trains were started which had no class divisions, namely Sinhagad Express on the Pune Mumbai route and Gitanjali Express on the Mumbai Kolkata route. Thus began a series of minor and major changes in the society. Now, anyone can go into a restaurant irrespective of his religion, race, caste or gender. In fact, we see boards outside, in the, outside the restaurants welcoming all. Another very significant change during the post-independence period is a right to express opinions against the government. Earlier, there were limits on expressing any opinion against political rulers. Now, Indian citizens can register their protest against the policies of the government through newspapers, speeches or other media. The Institution of a Family India has a rich family structure with a patrilineal background which help the family members to sustain a life with kinship groupings. Earlier, mostly joint families were found where family members live together under one roof. They all mutually work, eat, worship and cooperate each other in one or the other way. This also helps the family to get strong ment mentally, physically and economically. The children also get to know about the values and traditions of the society from their grandparents and elders. The family system has been given a lot of importance in India and has worked more often to make the bonding among families stronger. Meanwhile, urbanization and westernization has its influence on the basic structure of the Indian family. The circumstances and conditions also made the need for people to split the family. The family as a social institution has been undergoing change. The increasing commercialization of the economy and the development of the infrastructure of the modern state have introduced a significant change in the family structure in India in the 20th century. Especially the last few decades have witnessed important alterations in family life giving an impetus to the system of nuclear families. Social Welfare India is the first country in the world which has incorporated the concept of welfare state in the constitution itself. To say whether the concept of welfare state is being realized in India, one should be clear in one's mind on what a welfare state is. Now, a welfare state should make provisions to provide for health, education, employment, sanitation, good drinking water, removal of poverty, housing and other basic needs of people. That is why on 14th June 1964, 
the government of india constituted the ministry of social welfare under this ministry various programs are implemented for nutrition and child development social security and social protection women's welfare and development schedule castes and tribes according to 1971 census 22% people in india belonged to scheduled castes and tribes in recent times the scheduled castes and tribes have been called the untouchables and in tamil nadu they have been named adi dravida the scheduled caste constitute about 16.6% and the scheduled tribe is of about 8.6% of the population of india in india the castes and races that suffer from extreme economic educational and social backwardness because of old traditional practices of untouchability and others because of geographical isolation and inadequate infrastructural facilities and who require a specific attention for the increase of their growth and development are referred to as scheduled caste the scheduled tribe is seen historically as a group of individuals who had been in existence before the development of the indian state they are a group of people who are dependent on their local land for their survival and are isolated from the larger society the reason they are referred to as schedule is their inclusion in the schedule of the indian constitution the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes have been offered a reservation status since the time of independence of india which has guaranteed their political representation laws have been enacted so that they get educational scholarships and representation in parliament as well as state assemblies some seats are reserved for them in government services public health the constitution of india states that the primary duty of the government is to raise the people's standard of living to ensure proper nutrition and to improve public health the ministry of health and social welfare at the center helps the state government in this regard the objective of the sixth five year plan is to make primary health services as well as medical care available to rural people the tribal and the poor efforts were made towards helping good health by giving recognition to unani homeopathy ayurveda and naturopathy in addition to allopathy progress in the medical field has made the life of indians relatively free of health concerns in 1962 the first successful open heart surgery was performed under the leadership of dr nagarur gopinath at christian medical college hospital at vellore in tamil nadu he was an indian surgeon and one of the pioneers of cardiothoracic surgery in india now students christian medical college or cmc is a registered voluntary charitable and non-profit making organization it is known for its high quality compassionate care it not only is one of the pioneering institutions in the country in the area of medical research and high tech healthcare but also an institution which reaches out to the practical needs of the poor through low cost inpatient wards and outpatient clinics in the slum areas of vellore town with concessional or free care for the most needy so it is now no longer necessary to go abroad for such treatment 
even the marginalized can get themselves treated. Jaipur Foot How this great invention was made to reach thousands is a less known story. Well, what do you know? That the artificial foot was invented in 1968 in Jaipur by a traditional craftsman that the orthopedic surgeon Dr. Pramod Sethi, who brought it to the world's attention, got the Ramon Magasesi Award in 1981? Well, both are true. Pandit Ram Chandra Sharma had been invited to develop the Jaipur foot in the 1960s by Dr. Sethi to teach art as therapy to polio victims at the SMS hospital. Master G, as he is widely known, is however a restless man prone to looking around for problems to solve or things to make. He watched amputees being fitted with impractical, expensive, imported artificial limbs. Ever the experimenter, Master G created a foot made of vulcanized rubber hinged to a wooden limb, and the Jaipur foot was born. It has been continually innovated ever since with active involvement of Master G. The Jaipur foot, also known as the Jaipur leg, is a rubber-based prosthetic leg for people with below-knee amputations. It is inexpensive and widely acceptable as prosthesis and as a result has been widely used in India. Dr. Pramod Sethi designed and manufactured artificial limbs, noses and ears with the help of the skilled craftsman Ram Chandra Sharma who designed and developed it in 1968. This technology has made it easy for the differently abled to walk barefoot on rough surfaces, run, go cycling, work in the fields, climb mountains and trees, etc. Designed in and named after Jaipur, India, the prosthetic leg was designed to be inexpensive, water resistant and quick to fit and manufacture. Sudha Chandran, an Indian actress and dancer, lost her limb in an accident in 1982. She was fitted with a Jaipur foot and started dancing once again. Her journey is a theme of the Telugu 1984 film Mayuri, remade into 1986 Hindi film Nache Mayuri. Both the films starred Sudha as the lead. Yet, since 1975, over 3 lakh limbs have been fitted. Another 6 lakh beneficiaries have received calipers, crutches or tricycles, all given away free. India became the world leader in practical, low-cost foot prosthesis. And the Jaipur foot has become available throughout India and 18 other countries. Kidney Transplant Successful kidney transplantation offers the best possible quality of life for patients with end-stage renal disease, ESRD, that is, kidney failure. In keeping with progress made in the re rest of the world, in India too, attempts were made towards human organ transplantation. The first successful live donor renal transplant in India in January 1971 by Dr. Johnny and Dr. Mohan Rao at the Christian Medical College Hospital at Vellore in Tamil Nadu. They successfully transplanted the kidney donated by a living person into the patient's body. They concluded that renal transplantation was feasible in India and has a definite future. Since then, several thousand transplants have been done in our country. Test Tube Baby 
The test tube baby treatment is a generalized term for in vitro fertility treatment. Over the years, India has given a number of innovations to the world. One of those was on October 3rd, 1978, when Dr. Subhash Mukhopadhyay became the first physician in India and the second in the world to create a test tube baby. Test tube baby Durga, that is Kanupriya Agarwal, is India's first and the world's second test tube baby and the result of Dr. Subhash Mukhopadhyay's work in IVF. Before IVF was acceptable in India, the term test tube baby created a commotion within the population. Some people even thought that the baby was grown entirely in a test tube. Even today, there is a social stigma attached to this term. However, it's gradually fading away. It is important to know whether you call the baby a test tube baby or an IVF baby, he or she is human and as natural as any other baby in all its form. An embryo formed through IVF procedure is transferred into the mother's womb and the pregnancy is continued with the usual care. IVF treatment is becoming more and more popular among Indians today because of the risk rising incident of infertility or the inability to conceive naturally. Immunization Vaccines are important preventive medicines for primary health care and a critical component of nation's health security. Although international agencies such as the World Health Organization and the United Nations Children's Fund promote global immunization drives and policies. The success of an immunization program in any country depends more upon local realities and national policies. This is particularly true for a huge and diverse developing country such as India with its population of more than 1 billion people and 25 million births every year. With an aim to increase immunization coverage among children, the government has initiated several programs targeted at achieving universal immunization to overcome the threat of polio, measles, tetanus, TB, diphtheria and whooping cough. With the global initiative of eradication of polio in 1988, Following World Health Assembly Resolution, Pulse Polio Immunization Program was launched in India in 1995. Children in the age group of 0 to 5 years were administered polio drops during national and subnational immunization rounds every year. About 172 million children are immunized during each national immunization day. WHO, that is World Health Organization, on 24th February 2012, removed India from the list of countries with active endemic wild polio virus transmission. The Pulse Polio Initiative was started with an objective of achieving 100% coverage under oral polio vaccine. So, dear students, Today, we have covered the topics such as changes brought about by the Constitution, the institution of family, social welfare, scheduled caste and tribes, and public health. That's all for this class. We will continue with the lesson in the next part of the video. Thank you.